And we were treating acute myeloid leukemia with 7 and 3 in 1977. We are still doing the same in 2019. What is the best way forward to change by 2029? Okay, although we are doing the same induction regimens, actually, we have some progress in the treatment of ML by stratifying patient better as standard risk and high risk, by uh, finding some genetic aberrations such as FLTITD and giving them FLTITD inhibitors and by uh, increasing the supportive care for this patient's group, now we have a chance to increase overall survival, around 15% in my experience. On the other hand, now we have some drugs which approved by FDA, such as Venetoplax plus uh, hypomethylating agents and until now I used them for only three AML patients. One of them refractory to three lines of intensive chemotherapy which responded very well and now she is in transplant. Two of them ineligible to chemotherapy and both of them responded to therapy. So we are doing some progress, but not enough yet, actually. So we have to find out uh, different heterogeneous group of disorders and to be able to uh, treat, for example, IDH1 mutated patient with this kind of treatment and for new uh, genetic aberration, new targeted therapy, maybe improve the outcome of ML in addition 15 to 20 percent. Thank you. Good answer. My second question is that there are three and a half million papers on cancer. 135,000 in 2017 alone. But there is a staggering disconnect between great scientific insights and translating these into improved therapies for our patients. So what are we doing wrong? Good question and difficult to answer really. First of all, uh, we have to work intensely with basic science or uh, genetic work with genetics with a lot of PhD students, PhD uh, genetic experts, etc. So we know that the cancer is very heterogeneous disease and we have to find the difference between one AML, one type of AML from very uh, aggressive type of AML. So still we have for time to explore new things for the treatment of hematologic malignancy or other cancers. Because the title is not the means that these all patients will be treated in the same manner. So we are going to uh, treat them according to their subclassification, according to their genetic aberrations. So no two patients are alike, in other words. Exactly. So my third question relates to another strange issue, which is that the fact that children respond to the same treatment better than adults seems to suggest that the cancer biology is different in children, but also that the host is different. Since most cancers increase with age, 
most cancers will occur in adults then even having good therapy may not matter because the host is failing and is decrepit yeah. what is your solution for this a very difficult question because with the age when we have dna analyzed we can find a lot of mutations even if there is no cancer so it means we are already have tendency to develop cancer in that body probably our feeding foods our artificial a lot of facilities cause to this aberration of in our genetics so we have to go to silent locations without so much radiation without so much artificial foods maybe that is very simple solution for this kind of progress and refractoriness of the hematological cancer issues mm -hmm. to improve you mean the host yeah. a little okay um you have great knowledge and experience in the field i know because i have been treating patients along with you for many many years now and really have great respect for you um this is going to be a more of a strange question perhaps but a very important one because i'd like to hear if we gave you limitless resources money is not a problem nothing is a problem you can do anything you want what will be your way of finding a cure for cancer what would you like to do as i told previous i we have to go with basic science intensely mm, still we are working but the drug industry influence the physicians and doctors more than expected we have to concentrate on the basic research to be able to find the difference between different can difference between the same cancer tip and to elucidate the subgroup of these cancers to be able to get increase the success rate of the cancer i see basic science probably will solve this problem And my final question Burhan is more of a philosophical one. And I have to say that every physician I have spoken to so far has given a very an answer based on their own personal experience and I would encourage you to do the same of course offering patients with advanced stage non-curable cancer palliative but toxic treatment is a service or a disservice in the current therapeutic landscape unfortunately the modern medicine try to save to prolong the survival of the patients for 10 days with very high costs and with very low quality of life but still we have to discuss with the patient's family you know sometimes doctor force the family to such a unusual treatment modality sometimes the family forces the patient to do this kind of unlogic support both of them sometimes can be the triggering factor for unusual very expensive but which do not cause any improvements in quality of the life of the patients this is my short answer to support you so how do you deal with it when you know that the person has no hope of surviving beyond it is very days. easy to decide about myself yes. you know and about my family but when you are deciding related to patient's family 
because the most important part is the happiness of the patient's family. You have to think about that. You have to discuss every part of supportive therapy with them. And you have to tell them that this part only to increase the survival of the patients, to prolong survival of the patients for a couple of days without real benefit. But still, if they want to do that, probably we will do that. Can I just present to you a small case that I was just consulted about? A woman who is 69 years old has been diagnosed with a very high-risk MDS. She has 9% blasts. She has a P53 mutation and a complex cytogenetic changes, like five or six chromosomes are damaged. She, she has a profound pancytopenia. So she has a, all the bad signs. No matter what we do, she's not going to do well because of the complex cytogenetics, P53 mutation, the high blast count, the profound pancytopenia. She did have one good thing, which is she had a lot of ring sidroblasts, and it seemed that she was first noted to have an abnormal CBC in 2013. So for five, six years, she must have had a low-risk MDS, which suddenly transformed. Now I was consulted, and the recommended treatment is an immediate allogeneic stem cell transplant for her. But here is a 69-year-old woman. We are going to give her an allo transplant from a matched, unrelated donor, which is not an easy thing to do. But all the conditions that make her high risk of dying now are the same that are going to make her high risk for relapse. So the question was, is, they asked me what to do. And I told them that the recommendation is to transplant you. But if it was me, I wouldn't do it for myself. Because to me, the quality of whatever life I have left now is much more important that I would like to spend my, with my children and my family rather than a very small chance of long-term cure with the transplant, but with tremendous suffering involved. And the family got mad at me, especially the children. Because how is it possible that I am saying she should just die? And this is a situation that we face all the time, you and I. This was my recommendation. What would be yours? Yeah, I totally agree with you. And last month, I gathered the patient's family and I told them that I do not recommend any chemo for this patients because approximately transplant related mortality around 30 percent and relapse rate almost 30 to 40 percent for these patients and that is why we discharge the patients. After that, the family bring his patients to another center and he received chemo. In five days, he died. But that family tried to write several letters to the faculty that we do hesitate to do bone marrow transplantation. We sent them without any treatment and what, that is the reason of dying their son, etc., etc. So it is very difficult to deal with this kind of problem. In written informed concert, uh, cons uh, consent. consent, there are 
all subject why we are not going to do transplant for that patient. There is no way to do it. But of course, there is opinion difference from center to center. But still, we are trying to do with our heart in addition to with our experience. This is the way we are trying to do for our patients. That is beautiful. But would you do this for yourself? God forbid if you got this, and caught yourself in this situation. For, for me, I do not think for 30% transplant risk with very high relapses. No, I do not want to die in a such very bad situation. So maybe I can tell you in different way, the best way to <laughs> to solve that problem if you have brain, if you are brain. So, I don't know. Yeah. Well, I think that your answers are very meaningful to me because, as you said, they come from your heart. Yeah. And at some point that medicine must remain a very social science. Exactly which is not an exact, abstract thing, but a very human thing. So I really appreciate you taking the time. Thank you so much. Thank you very much. Okay. Bye-bye.